Hey guys, what is happening YouTube? My name is Johnny, this is Rules for Rebels, and we are back with episode 57 of Side Hustle Tuesdays. Now, I really love today's story, and I think you guys will as well. Today's story is about a guy who started a business for less than $15 and is making over $45,000 per month. Now, let me say that again, just for emphasis, over $45,000 per month. Now, many of you guys are probably thinking that this guy must manufacture a product that got picked up by Walmart or something along those lines. Many of you may, however, be surprised when I tell you what he actually did is start a blog and tied in affiliate marketing to that blog. Affiliate marketing is something many people new to online hustling and marketing get started with and wind up quitting saying it's BS, it's a scam, you can't make any money, etc. Today's hustler, however, did just that. And while it did take him over a year to make his first $25, as I've said before, affiliate marketing and blogging is a long-term game. However, the site eventually continued to grow, and today he's making over $45,000 per month. Today's story is about a Target employee who started a blog uh, that goes on to make $45,000 per month. That's over half a million dollars per year, and he still works at Target. Now, you may be asking yourself, making $45,000 per month, why in the world is he still working at Target? His blog, as we'll discuss, is a finance blog, and he's a frugal guy. So up until now, he's continued working. However, that said, he's actually quitting his job very soon to focus on this blog slash business full time. So Target manager Robert Farrington started investing at a young age, and it's been a lifelong obsession for him. He first got interested in finance and investing at the age of 13 when his dad sat him down at the kitchen table to have him help him with his taxes. A few years later, his grandfather gifted him $1,000 to invest with, and he's been hooked ever since on finance and investing. Now, even at the age of 16, when many of his peers were spending their money on movies, dinners out, and cars, Robert was investing to grow his long-term wealth, or at least what would become his long-term wealth. When Robert got to college, he was really excited about joining some investment clubs and connecting and sharing ideas with his peers. However, he was a bit disappointed once he got there. He found the investment clubs and his peers were pitching and recommending and discussing penny stocks and day trading, not something he agreed with and not something which he thought was wise for college students to engage in. For any of you guys who are interested in finance and investing and active on Reddit, you can probably think of these clubs like r backslash Wall Street Bets. For those of you guys who don't know what that is, it's kind of a funny investment subreddit, which is a lot of younger kids in their teens and early 20s who go all in on high risk penny stocks and day trade. Uh, the motto of the forum is jokingly always about something about yachts and getting rich or dying trying. And members actually take pride in losing huge sums of money. If you're interested in learning more, just do a quick Google search. There's been some interesting articles written about millennials who have made hundreds of thousands of dollars in hours or even days and lost it just as quickly. But Anyhow, guys, that's besides the point. I've gotten a little bit off track. Uh, because Robert didn't really agree with this message his peers were espousing, he decided to start a blog called The College Investor, where he planned to share more viable and transparent advice and honest opinions. He used a free WordPress theme, a 99 cent domain he bought from GoDaddy, and some cheap hosting, all of which cost well under $15, and he started his blog. He published his first post, then another, and then another. Now, just to be clear, and getting back to this $45,000 per month we discussed, this is not a rags to riches overnight story. This took some time. As I've always said, affiliate marketing and blogging can be very, very lucrative and also very, very passive, but it's a long-term game and a long-term play, and it takes a while to get going. Robert started this back in 2009 and committed to posting three times per week. He didn't know about marketing or, or even really blogging or running a site, so he used his time early on when he didn't really have an audience to embarrass himself in front of to learn from his mistakes. About a year later, he made his first $25 through an affiliate sale. At this point, Robert had recently gotten married. He proudly told his wife about his first $25 he made, and she said, you mean you spent all this time in the site and that's all that you've made, $25? She was a bit dismayed, but he couldn't have been prouder. This was no longer just a, a hobby or a passion product he'd actually made money writing about something he loved. Now at this point, Robert was working full-time at Target. He started out part-time during college. He then became a team leader, then a supervisor, later an assistant manager before finally becoming a store manager, which is a pretty good job in its own right. During the day, he manages a Target. At night, he writes and blogs. Now Robert's main source of income is affiliate sales. So he writes blog posts and guides on his site, which he recommends products or services, maybe something like an online brokerage, a high yield savings account, 
or maybe even more recently a Bitcoin exchange if he recommends cryptos as part of a portfolio. I'm not sure his stance on cryptos, however. Anyhow, when someone buys or signs up, he receives a commission, which could be a flat fee, or it could be a percentage of a sale. Sometimes they're ongoing commissions. If it's a monthly subscription, he gets a, a, a cut of a commission every single month. This encourages Robert to post quality content consistently and to be viewed as an expert in his space. His relationships with his readers is key to him building the trust he needs from them to follow his recommendations. The site went on to make much, 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 much more than $25. It turned into a six-figure side hustle and he's averaging $45,000 per month. As he was growing the site, he realized it's tough to do on your own, so he decided he needed to connect with others in his niche, and that's exactly what he did. He connected with others in the space who had a larger audience. They would do collaborations, and each would pick up some new followers and fans from each other's audiences. He also attended conferences and meetups where finance bloggers connected. He would invest time and energy into others and only ask for something in return after he had provided some value to someone else, and he attributes that to a lot of his success in networking and collaborating. Today, he's focusing more on automation. Despite this being a side hustle, he's trying to use his time more effectively. He has his email process automated so he can direct people to his products and services and make money while he's not even in front of the computer and even while he's sleeping. As a founder of The College Investor, Robert has always been smart with his money and frugal, which is why he hasn't quit his job despite making more in a month than he and probably most people make in a year. That said, he is gonna be quitting his job very soon to focus on this project full time. He hopes his site will be the go-to site for student investors. Now, this is truly an amazing story. Any business which makes $45,000 per month is pretty impressive in my book. But what's even more impressive is this is something he started himself with only $15 in an area that most people can't hack it. I found this story and this business and this hustle to be an awesome success. Keep in mind, he started in 2009, so success didn't come right away. He built it and worked on it for over a year before he even made a penny. He committed to publishing three times per, per week, and he said he's seen a lot of bloggers get started and 99.9% .9 fizzle out before the end of year one. He says if you commit to something and follow through, you're almost guaranteed to have some level of success. At times, he didn't want to work on his site, but he said he would just sit on the couch next to his girlfriend and current wife. Not that he has a girlfriend and wife. By that, I mean his girlfriend at the time, who's now his wife, LOL. He would blog and work on his site while she watched Real Housewives of OC. Just a few comments on this side hustle story. I definitely agree with what Robert said in terms of if you commit to something and follow through, in his case, posting a blog consistently, you will have some level of success. I definitely agree with that. But I also want to add that I think the niche or topic area you choose to focus on is important. Robert chose finance, which not only lends itself to a lot of topic ideas, but many different types of affiliate offers, be it bank accounts, investment newsletters, brokerages, etc., 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 all of which tend to be very high paying for signups. If you, for example, started a blog about Pokemon cards or camping or something else, you may not make as much money as Robert. Now, actually, I think Pokemon cards and camping are actually probably pretty good niches, but you get my point. I think there is something to be said for how well your niche can be monetized. In addition to just knowing the right content, I think for an author, finding the right tone, finding your voice, and finding your personality is another key and is essential to engaging with your, your audience, and this part can be tricky to figure out for many. Anyhow, guys, that's today's side hustle story. I myself am very interested in blogging and vlogging and creating content as well as affiliate marketing, so I really enjoyed this one. I think it may open up some of your eyes to the idea of affiliate marketing, that it isn't just some BS scam that a bunch of losers on affiliate forum, or on Warrior Forum engage in, but it can be a very real and very profitable business. I found this story hugely inspiring to me. It's helped me set some new, even loftier goals for some of my projects. Anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed today's story. Hope you were inspired. And until next time, this is Rules for Rebels and Side Hustle Tuesdays signing out.